Hello everyone and welcome to my young and restless gossip channel. I hope everyone is having a wonderful day. Before we begin, please hit the subscribe button and give this video a thumbs up. Chelsea and Adam's world are rocked by Connor as a tearful Ashley grills Tucker. Billy watches as Chelsea questions Connor about why he won't tell her what's hurting him at Crimson Lights. His demeanor this morning has been deplorable. If he does not want to attend sports camp, that is great, but they must address it in a respectful manner. Connor sighs. Chelsea makes a disgruntled gesture toward Billy. When Billy arrives, Chelsea informs him that Connor had a difficult night and hasn't been sleeping well. Billy, too, experiences nightmares and has some coping mechanisms. Connor gives a nod. Chelsea walks away and lets them converse. Billy inquires about Connor's dreams. Connor confesses that he fell off a boat in the middle of the ocean at night. He couldn't go back to the boat no matter how hard he tried. Billy believes he was also sinking. Connor replies, yeah, Billy had the same dream. It's frightening and perplexing, but then you wake up, still terrified but realizing you're still at home in your bed and everything is fine. What if everything doesn't feel right? Connor wonders. What if it's extremely bad? Billy informs him that he needs to figure out why he feels that way and then talk to someone, like you're doing right now. Connor admits that he despises school, except for Johnny and Katie who will be attending a different high school in the autumn. He has no friends. Billy concurs that it is difficult. Connor also assumed he would have a baby sister. Nothing is correct, and nothing is nice. No matter where he goes to school, he'll be the odd kid with a disordered mother and a troubled father. When he attempts to defend them, are you being bullied? Billy inquires. Connor is hesitant to tell his mother for fear of upsetting her. Billy claims she is stronger than he believes and that he is the most important thing in her life. He must express his feelings to others that care about him. Connor declares, I'm tired. Billy suggests that he go upstairs and rest. Billy approaches Chelsea and informs her that Connor has gone upstairs. She inquires if he has opened up to him. Yeah, a little bit, Billy says. It appears that he is being bullied at school. He doesn't want to return. Oh, Chelsea says, we'll switch schools. This is difficult for Billy who replies, it sounds like it has something to do with you and Adam. Connor feels compelled to defend them, yet children can be harsh. Chelsea bursts into tears. Billy is concerned that Connor is depressed. More, Michelle Stafford considers the past. Adam notices Sally in the park and inquires about her new work at Newman. I don't, she says. Victor cut the power, and he did it because of you. What exactly did my father say about the job? Adam fumes. Victor asked the design branch to focus on Adam's company, according to Sally. He had to concentrate on keeping him and Nick in line. So whatever you did to irritate him, I'm out of a job. Adam pronounces a curse. He apologizes to Sally and promises to do everything in his power to make things right. Sally says it's unfixable, and Victor says there will never be a design section. She had the impression that she was a part of a larger plan. She had the impression that Victor was up to more than just keeping people in line. Why and are Adam Sally? Sally is told by Adam that the least he can do is offer her a job. Sally insists that they will never collaborate again, saying, I am not reconsidering. Adam isn't given up on Newman Media or the merger because he believes I deserve it. Sally advises him to stop worrying about what he deserves and start being grateful for what he has which, unlike her, is a firm to run that has the potential to be very successful. As usual, Adam assures her that she is correct. He still wants to assist her, but Sally assures she will be okay. When one door closes, another slams into you. She is unable to return to Chancellor Winters because they have moved on to a firm that Victor recommended. She believes she and Chloe will have to restart from scratch. I can't help but wonder if this was all a ruse. Victor demonstrating his dominance simply because he can. Adam believes it's all about him and knowing his place. In. Tucker awakens in his suite to see Ashley sobbing in a chair. She confesses. I made a huge mistake. Is this a joke? Tucker wonders. He imagined they enjoyed a fantastic night following their wedding. So magical that you snuck off in the middle of the night? Ashley asks. Tucker mutters. Oh yeah. I couldn't sleep since I felt restless. Ashley discovers he went to the bar and informs him that she knows he went down, drank with Nate, and then ended up in Audra's room. 
Tucker frowns, Cameron grinds, why, and hints Arthur. about a pregnancy plan. Tucker awakens in his suite to see Ashley sobbing in a chair. She confesses, I made a huge mistake. Is this a joke? Tucker wonders. He imagined they enjoyed a fantastic night following their wedding. So magical that you snuck off in the middle of the night? Ashley asks. Tucker mutters, oh yeah, I couldn't sleep since I felt restless. Ashley discovers he went to the bar and informs him that she knows he went down, drank with Nate, and then ended up in Audra's room. Tucker frowns, why and R. Tucker? Ashley explains that she awoke, went in search of Tucker, and found him. Tucker explains that he went to the pub to get a drink, and why were you there? Ashley yells, demanding to know why he was in Audra's room. Tucker believes it is past time for him to come clean. He regrets not having done so previously. Ashley bursts into tears. Tucker claims Kyle spent the entire time he was in Audra's room. Call him if you're questioning me. Please come here. Ashley climbs into bed with him. Tucker tells her about the artist who had an affair with an underage girl when he wasn't in charge. He discovered it and urged Audra to correct it, which she did. Adam recently discovered previous emails about it and blackmailed Audra. Ashley inquires as to how Adam became involved. Tucker sighs. Phyllis requested that he get off her back, but it's been handled. Handled? Ashley inquires. Tucker declares, no more emails, no more blackmail. Ashley wonders if he would have told her this if she hadn't asked. Diane surprised Jack with an outside brunch to commemorate their two-week anniversary at the Abbott Mansion. What is this? Jack wonders, astonished to find an envelope. It's more proof of how much I love you, she says. Jack opens the envelope, begins reading and comments, this sounds like a prenup. Diane says that it's a post-nuptial agreement. Jack wants her to rip it up because he has complete faith in her. Diane believes it will finally silence everyone and give Ashley one less reason to have an issue with them. It doesn't feel right, according to Jack. Diane believes it communicates that she loves him and married him for the right reasons. Why and R. Jack Diane? Jack tells Diane, I can't do this. It's not right. Isn't it enough that he loves and trusts her? Diane claims that he and Kyle are the only ones who have accepted her. To hell with the rest of them, Jack says. Diane claims that it is simpler for him to say than it is for her to live with. Diane, choked up, admits she hears the gossip. Everyone can see from the document that all she wants is his affection. Jack isn't expecting it to persuade Ashley. They argue, and Jack understands Diane is willing to battle for this. Diane is standing up for them. Even if he claims not to require it, she does. Just sign it, Jack. He is correct. Jack then takes a picture to present to Ashley so she knows what she can do about her suspicions. Why and R. Jack Diane? Chelsea receives a call from Anita and exclaims, he did what? She picks up the phone and informs Billy that Connor has just gone upstairs and contacted Anita to ask if he can stay with her for a while. Clearly he wants to leave Juno City, which leads me to believe he also wants to leave me. Tucker tells Ashley in his suite that he would have told her about the blackmail when the moment was perfect. He's been preoccupied with their wedding. He reveals that when he discovered what the PR staff had done, he fired them, and Audra was merely covering up the cover-up. It would not have been a good time for it to be revealed as they were launching their new firm. So you did it to protect me. Ashley grins. They both agree that they've had their fill of fighting. Ashley receives Jack's communication via the postnup and shows it to Tucker. Why in our Tucker Ashley? Jack toasts his beautiful wife and a life full of joy and happiness at the Abbott house. Diane raises a glass to the family finally being at peace with one another. Jack wishes for family harmony. What more could Ashley want? Diane wonders. Ashley asks Tucker in Tucker's suite if he has found a loophole in the postnup yet. Diane, she believes, has found a means to pry the Abbott riches from Jack's grasp. Tucker claims that when the marriage fails, Diane receives only what she came in with. Perhaps Jack has learned his lesson. Ashley thinks it's too neat and tidy, asking, who signs a postnup? Why has Jack changed his mind? Billy receives a text from Jack inquiring whether he has heard from Ashley in Crimson Lights. He responds, not yet. Connor's gone, cries Chelsea. He is not present in the residence. His backpack has vanished as have several of his clothes. Sally is astonished to see Connor walking through the park. What's going on? 
she inquires. Hope it's been a, long a fantastic time. night. Adam has joined Billy and Chelsea at Crimson Lights, who are on the phone with the police, reporting Connor missing. She becomes terrified when Adam informs her that Connor has not contacted him. Adam tells them that they will find him. He couldn't have gotten too far away. When Chance comes, he responds, nothing yet. They'd gone through every possible exit route and don't believe the kid has gotten that far. Connor tells Sally in the park that his father told him about the baby and says, I'm really sorry. She says it's been sad and difficult, but it's getting better every day. What about you? She inquires. He claims to be fine. Sally inquires as to his destination. He claims to be heading to a friend's house. Sally requests that he walk to the kiosk and fetch her some water before pulling out her phone to call Adam. She inquires whether he gave Connor permission to go to a friend's house on his own. Why and our Sally Connor? Tucker informs Ashley in his suite that they must leave the Abbott home. They recently married and live with her brother. He believes they can afford their own apartment, which he believes will be terrific. Why and our Tucker Ashley? At the Abbott mansion, Jack leaves Billy a message, concerned that this may be the calm before the storm for Ashley. He hangs up and tells Diane that he doesn't think this is finished. They are canoodlers. More about Susan Walter's extraordinary year. Adam informs Chelsea and Billy that Connor is with Sally at Crimson Lights. She'll chat to him and persuade him to return home. Chelsea needs to see him, but Adam advises her to be patient. Billy believes Adam is correct. He's safe and so are you. Sally thanks Connor for the water at the park. Connor says he has to leave, but Sally invites him to stay a little longer. What's been going on with you these days? Connor shrugs and says, stuff. Sally can see he doesn't want to discuss it. She understands that it might be difficult to talk about things, but when you're wounded, upset, angry, or confused, talking to someone can really help. He appears to be preoccupied. Connor sighs, I'm not really going to my friends. Sally inquires whether he had considered fleeing. Connor gives a nod. She admits to having considered fleeing numerous times in her life. However, her difficulties followed her and would not leave until she figured out what to do. Connor is at a loss on what to do. Sally encourages him to communicate with the people he loves about. She claims that his parents are waiting for him at the coffee shop. Would you mind letting me walk you back there? Connor gives a nod. Sally, Connor, lie and R. Ashley and Tucker inform Jack and Diane that they are leaving the Abbott residence. Ashley wonders how much begging Jack had to do to convince Diane to sign the post-nuptial agreement. Diane claims that it was her idea. Jack refused to sign it, but Diane pushed. They make their way out. Tucker laughs. Do you buy any of that? Ashley inquires. Tucker claims to. It could be time for them to acknowledge that she truly loves Jack. This must come to an end. Ashley shrugs and says, I don't know. Tucker, Diane, Yee, and R. Ashley. More information, exclusive. Audra's main concern, according to Zulika Silver. Chelsea and Adam are relieved to see Connor at Crimson Lights, who informs them, I don't want to be here. I do not want to return to Walnut Grove. I'd like to attend school near Grandma. I despise this town. Please don't force me to stay.